Good morning, church. This is Pastor Ryan. Hear the good news this morning from Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has also made you an heir. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So 15 years ago, I was planting a brand new church in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And when in Wisconsin, do as the Wisconsinites do. And that meant that my friends and I from church decided to join a bowling league. We wanted to shine the light of Christ in a pretty dark bowling alley. And so I invited my Japanese friend Kaz to join the team. Kaz was an executive at the Kikoman soy sauce factory right there in the area. Now, Kaz's wife, she grew up a Christian in Japan. Not a lot of Christians in Japan, but she did. She grew up a Christian in Japan. But Kaz himself, he was not yet a believer. And I hoped that spending some quality time in the bowling alley would help him take one step closer to Jesus Christ. Right about the time that my son Peter was born, Kaz and his wife were also expecting their second child, a son. One evening at the bowling alley, Kaz told me that he was about to be adopted by a family back in Japan. Not as child, that he was going to be adopted. Now this came as a shock to me because Kaz was about 30 years old and he was expecting his second child of his own. And his parents were alive and they were well and they were active in his life. And yet there is a wealthy family back in Japan who wanted to adopt this grown up man to pass on their family fortune and their name. This was a very stressful time in Kaz's life because his biological parents would have to wait to see his brand new baby until his adoptive parents saw the baby first. Cause could still have a relationship with his biological mother and father, but from now on, his primary relationship would be with his adoptive parents. Now, I didn't know what to make of Cause's grown-up adoption. As I look back on those days, I wish I had told Kaz that his grown-up adoption is a lot like becoming a Christian. Whenever we are ready, we can call God Abba, Father. Only by the Spirit can we do that. Abba, Father. And the Holy Spirit changes our allegiance from everything else in the world to our Heavenly Father. That is when we put on the status and the character and the teachings of Jesus Christ, when we call out Abba Father in faith in Jesus Christ. Now today is Pentecost Sunday. This is the day that we celebrate that God's Spirit has come down and is coming alive in believers today. But today is also Confirmation Sunday, the day that our young people move from children of the church to adulthood in the church. This is the day that they sign their own name on the adoption papers from God. From now on, they will be treated as grown-ups in the church, not because the state thinks that they're old enough to drive a car and not because the nation says that they are old enough to vote, but because we, the church, believe that the Holy Spirit is at work in their lives, making them into 
mature followers of Jesus. This takes a while. It's a process. Those of us a little further on the journey knows, know that God is not done with us yet. Now, in today's scripture, Paul tells his friends in Galatia that they are heirs to a great estate. Just like Bruce Wayne, we have been given an incredible inheritance. When Bruce Wayne lost his parents as a boy, he had to do whatever his servant, Alfred, told him to do. But when he grew up, Bruce Wayne was suddenly free to be a billionaire businessman during the daytime and, much more importantly, Batman by night. Bruce Wayne did not have to obey Alfred anymore, even though Alfred certainly tried to steer him in the right direction. Now, Paul in today's scripture says that the law is like a guardian or a trustee. And Pastor Kent last week suggested that the law is like a governess. I would like to suggest this morning that the law is a lot like Alfred, the butler of Bruce Wayne. Now, the law is not wrong, but the law is no longer a master. There were fundamentalists coming to the churches in Galatia insisting that these converts to Christianity eat like Jews and get circumcised like Jews, and this made Paul very angry. Paul wanted his friends in Galatia to grow up, to be free. Now just imagine Batman getting so scared that he put away his cape and his utility belt and he started to do whatever Alfred told him to do. That would make a lousy comic book. You see, once you grow up, it would be incredibly immature to revert to that kind of childish behavior. Now, I once saw a little boy with a t-shirt that read, always be yourself, unless you can be Batman, then always be Batman. I would respond, why pretend to be Batman? when you can actually put on the love, the truth, and the identity of Jesus Christ. This is not a superpower. It is the supernatural love of Jesus that changes who we are. Now, Paul says that when we are immature, we are subject to the elemental spiritual forces of the world. What is he talking about? Well, Paul is talking about all the different rules of the world. Now, Jewish people, they were subject to the rules that they found in the Old Testament. And the Galatians, well, they didn't grow up under the biblical law, but they still grew up with feelings of guilt and shame and regret. And they thought that they could get rid of all those bad feelings by rigorously following the laws of the Old Testament. Paul tells them to knock it off. Stop trying to earn your salvation, but trust in the Holy Spirit to fill them with new life. The Holy Spirit is the power and the presence of God that transforms us into the image of Jesus Christ. God has adopted you, and now he expects you to grow up and be more and more like Jesus. Now, every year, I have the confirmation students write a paper about their own personal faith and about the catechisms that they studied this year. Now, this morning, I'm going to quote some of those papers to explain what it means to be filled with the Spirit, what it means to be saved, what it means to grow into full maturity in the image of Jesus Christ. These are the wise reflections of the maturing Christians in our congregation. I hope you listen carefully to what these young adults have to teach you this morning. uh, Jonah Rosima wrote about how everyone sins. He writes, sinning is something that everybody in this world struggles with. Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that God may forgive us for our sins and that we may go to heaven. Everybody sins and nobody is perfect. But the least we can do is try to be as close as we can to the image that God has for us. Boy, that just fits the scripture very, very well. Thank you, Jonah. Owen McIntosh wrote about how God forgives our sins. He writes, even though sin is bad, 
God will always forgive our sins. He will not abandon us because of our sin. I believe he does quite the opposite. I think that when people sin, God tries to bring them closer to him so that they can repent. Amen, Owen. Bronte Ellis wrote about the universal tendency to justify our sins rather than freely depending on the grace of God. She writes, humans always try to defend themselves instead of looking at what they did wrong. This is why we can't accept the sins that we ex commit. In a sense, sin is not just committing the act or thinking the thought, but also just not doing the right thing in a moment where you can. Amen. Lily Brown wrote about her own conversion experience as a Christian. She writes, I had thought that the Bible and Christians were saying that if you turn to God, that you wouldn't sin anymore. But I quickly learned that what they were saying is not that if you are a Christian, you don't sin. Rather, it was saying, if you were a Christian, you still sin, but you are forgiven. Oh, amen. Peter Eikenberry Barber, my son, wrote about how God saves us from sin. Peter wrote, God the Father sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross to save us from sin and death. Salvation is not earned, but rather given to us by God's grace through faith in Christ. Salvation means eternal life, but also God's Holy Spirit fills us with faith, hope, and love in this world. Amen. Jaina Waddell wrote about how God has adopted us as his children. She writes, God is our father. God is the model for earthly fathers. We all are his children, and he is our protector. Again, he wants to protect us from Satan's evil acts. Just like a normal father would want to protect his kids from danger, God does the same for us. That's beautiful. Thank you, Jaina. I would like to add to those students and the wise words that they have to offer that the Holy Spirit was working in these young people as they were writing these essays. And it fits so very nicely with the scripture that was assigned for today. The Holy Spirit has adopted these young people and is bringing them to full maturity in Jesus Christ even in the midst of a global pandemic. They showed up for online confirmation class week after week. I just thank God for this faith that is growing within them. And I thank God for all the students that participated in confirmation one way or the other for the last couple of years. May the Holy Spirit keep on working in their lives. Please join me in praying exactly for that. Now confirmation, it's not a graduation ceremony from church. Mature Christians continue to gather at church to worship God and then to go out into the world to love our neighbors in Christ's name, right? We come here to worship, but then we're sent out in the world to love just as God teaches us. What we are saying is that we have this new generation of believers ready to step out into the world carrying the identity, the reputation, and the saving love of Jesus Christ because they've been adopted by God and sent into the world to help other people find what they're looking for. Loving adoption into the grace of Jesus Christ. May the Spirit of Jesus continue to bring these students, these confirmands, these young adults in our congregation to full maturity in Jesus Christ. And may God the Father, who has adopted all of us as his children, freely giving us the grace and the wisdom of Jesus, may we live into that heavenly inheritance in this world and the next. Would you join me as we close in prayer? Loving God, we thank you for all these students that are being confirmed today, and we thank you for all those who seek to be discipled by the Spirit and the words of your Son. Help us to find our meaning in life. Help us to find our salvation 
Help us to find the forgiveness that we need, the grace that we depend upon through a loving relationship with you. Help us to cry out, Abba, Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Fill us up and send us out as good reflections of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you all.